Hello and welcome to BadgerCam. In this week's video, I'm going to be building the Airfix 172nd scale Mosquito, a kit that I really couldn't wait to get my hands on. The real plane was made almost entirely of wood, leading to its nickname the Wooden Wonder. Arguably, it was one of the most versatile planes of World War II. The plane never nearly ended up getting built though, and development was ordered to be scrapped at one point. However, the plane's development continued and upon testing surpassed even the designer's expectations. Originally being designed to carry a 500 pound payload, it ended up carrying a 2000 pound payload. Fitted with everything from rockets, cannons and cameras, the Mosquito went on to fill many different roles for the RAF during World War II. Anyway, enough about the plane, let's get into the box. In the box you get full colour instructions, the parts to build the plane, and a set of decals to build two versions of the plane. One in the day scheme and one the night fighter scheme. I'm going to be building this one in the night fighter colours later on. First look at the sprues. Tiny bit of flash on these, but being a new tooling, there's really not much of this. Everything looks really crisp. However, there is visible oil or release agent on some of the spurs that will need cleaning up before you get round to painting them. First thing on the build menu is the cockpit. Strange setup with this model, it's got the cockpit and the wing supports built into this part, as well as the bomb bay. All of this goes together well though, with no problems to report here. All of these parts will benefit from being left for a good while for the glue to properly set up before you move on to the next step. At this point it's time to do some pre-painting. Just be aware none of the shades used here are a spot on match. For the main interior green I'm using Vallejo Gunship Green. With the main base done, next it's time to paint the fuel tanks. For these I'm using Vallejo BS Dark Earth. Next up is the seats. For the seats I'm using Tamiya XF5 Flat Green. And lastly, I'm going in with Army Painter Matte Black to do all the instrument panels and the like. Pre-painting done, it's time to put the main fuselage pieces together. These pieces go together beautifully. However, I, should have, I shouldn't have painted the supports for the wing as they make the fit a little tight. Other than that though, these parts just need a light clamping to make sure they stay in place while the glue dries. 
With the fuselage dry, it's time to revisit the area before moving forward to clean up the seam lines while they're still easy to get at. Those done, it's just a few bits to add to this area along with the rudder and horizontal stabilizers before moving on to the undercarriage. The undercarriage on this model is a strange beast. The instructions call for you to dry fit the main supports into the upper part of the wing and use it as a jig. Even though the parts here look very fragile and delicate, when they all come together, they build into a rather solid undercarriage. These bits will also need a very delicate cleanup to remove the nubs from where they're attached to the spurs to get a good finish. This part however I'm going to leave off unglued until all the painting is done at the end as I don't want to risk breaking them during the painting process. Undercarriage done, it's onto the main wing and engine cowlings. The main wing bits go together well but dry fitting before attempting assembly would be recommended as I overglued a few bits on my model. Heads up though, make sure you drill the holes now for the external fuel tanks as I forgot this step and had a rather nerve wracking time drilling the holes later, so you've been warned. The insides of the wheel wells will also need pre-painting now rather than later. For this I use Vallejo Gunship Green again. With that done, it's now time to add the wing to the main fuselage, before repeating the whole process backwards for the opposite wing. I think the two wings took up about two thirds of the entire build for this model, and I didn't expect this bit to take quite as long as it did. Anyway, here it is with both wings on. Now it's time to do the props. A lot of bits from here on out I'm going to be building but not adding to the model to make the painting stage easier. On the subject of making things easier, the kit actually comes with clipping masks for the wheel wells, which I think is a nice touch. Props done and put aside, it's onto the Bombay area. Everything here should be pre-painted before assembly. This area of the build was really fiddly to make. If you're making this yourself, it's easy to actually fit the bombs to the racks before adding them to the bays, as there really is no room to grip the bombs, even with tweezers. The rack holders for the bombs will fit into the bomb bay after construction though, so don't worry about that. Bomb bay done. It's now just a simple case of fitting the aerial and the external fuel tanks onto the wings to complete the main build of this model. 
Again, adding the external fuel tanks would have been easier if I'd have pre-drilled the holes. Now moving on to the painting. Before painting, I mask all the areas up I don't want to get paint on, as I'm going to be using a rattle can spray paint of matte black for this model. For the masking, I use tape for the Bombay. Sponge pieces for the cockpit. And bits of blue tack for the lights. Black base coat down, it's time to remove all of the masking and add the pre-painted wheels to the plane. Now, back onto a more normal mode of painting. For the upper surface of the wings, I'm going to be using Vallejo Medium Sea Grey and painting this on in three or four thin layers to try and avoid leaving brush strokes. For the center strip of camo, I'm masking the lines off as a guide for the first coat before carefully carrying on freehand with the rest of the painting. Four coats later, this is how it's looking with all the grey done. Onto the green. For this I'm using Vallejo BS Dark Green. Again, building it up in thin layers. Green all done, it's onto the finishing steps. First thing to do is the panel lines. For this I'm using Watered Down Army Painter Strong Tone. Anything more than what I want in the uh, grooves, I'm streaking back with my finger just to give it a bit of a weathered look. With that done, it's time to weather the black areas up a bit. As nothing painted black stays looking pure black for long, I've got a black car and it always seems to look a mess within a few hours. To achieve this, I'm going to be using a very, very light dry brush of BS Dark Earth, removing 99% of the paint to give the black areas a subtle dirty look. After that, I'm literally using the dirty brown water from my wash pot to blend it all together. Don't try doing this at home if you've been using metallic paints though, as it will look like it's been glitter bombed. Finally, after all that's done, I go over the black areas with a very watered down black again, just to blend everything together and, and tone back a few areas where I overdid the dry brushing. And this is it all dry, with the clear parts added. Now onto the decals. The decals in this kit were nice to add. However, I got a bit of silvering with mine and feel that some decal thinner is a must for this model in the Night Fighter colours. I don't normally use it, but I think I'm going to have to revisit this plane with some decal fix to try and address this further down the line. Anyway, a very light coat of flory dark dirt over the decals later, and this is the finished model. I'm rather chuffed with how it's come out. This is the first Night Fighter paint scheme I've attempted. All in all though, I really enjoyed building this model, but didn't expect it to take as long as it did to make. All of the parts in this kit go together really well, and there's very little to report about the build to be honest. Everything was very simple and straightforward to make. I was surprised at just how solid the wheels turned out to be when dry. The only part of this build to watch is the Bombay, as if you do them as the instructions say to, they're really fiddly to install. Anyway, that's my look at the Airfix 172nd Mosquito. A great model, certainly worth the price. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you're thinking of getting one of these kits, it gave you a good idea of what to expect from the build. Anyway, until next time, look after yourself and have a good one. Goodbye.